الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. This um, handout I gave you um, it's in Islam called Usulu al Fiqh um, talking about the um, ways how um, the rules have been used by the scholars to drive out the Sharia from the Quran and Sunnah and other sources. So for Muslims, we're ahead of uh, the West by nearly 1,200 years, having a very well-structured way to drive the law from the text they have, the textbooks they have, the Quran and the Sunnah, and the practice of the Sahaba, um, of the Sharia, and how it's transmitted to us. So it's not only <clears throat> they take the Quran as it is. What's your name? Aisa. Aisa. Aisa Amar. Amir. Come and take one of these. Every week you come and we stamp the subject we studied. Today is 120. Um, so when you finish stamping all this booklet, you graduate. It takes three to four years or five years. Depends how, how often you're absent. Um, so the Quran wasn't like, you know, taken, just the Prophet said, or we take it. The Prophet Wasallam, every time he was receiving a verse from the Quran, he used to ask the Sahaba to write it down. So many of the verses written down, and because it has been supervised not only by the Prophet ﷺ, when he writes down, he asks them to write it down, read it to him, and he correct them. But also supervised by Allah Azza wa Now, Allah Azza wa sent the Jibreel with a, a verse in the Quran. Allah Azza wa said, لا يستوي القاعدون والمجاهدون في سبيل الله فضل الله المجاهدين على القائدين درجة. That those who fight for the sake of Allah and struggle for the sake of Allah, they're not equal to those who are sitting doing nothing at home. And Allah has gave um, those who struggle for the sake of Allah a step ahead than those who sit and do at home and do nothing. Now, when he said the ayah, a Sahabi who wrote it, he wrote it on a back, uh, on a bone, which is a the backbone, the, the shoulder bone, which is like this. It has a gap here, and it goes like this. So he wrote it, but he didn't bother writing anything here. A bit curved, so he didn't. And those who were sitting with the Prophet Wasallam, one of them was Abdullah ibn Maktoum, and he was blind. And he said to the Prophet Wasallam, I can't go and fight for the sake of Allah, because I'm blind, I can't see my way. And Jibreel came down and he said, لا يستوي القاعدون غير أولي الضرر. So he inserted a small phrase, except those who have disability. So the Sahabi who wrote this verse, he found that this place was empty. So he wrote it here, غير أولي الضرر. Allah knows he's going to send insertion and he made this Sahabi miss this place. So when he wrote the ayah, it came like, it's written perfectly in sequence. He didn't have that, a computer, he could move the cruiser and he insert the board. I didn't have to use the razor and raise it. He found the space already empty. So it was supervision by Allah Azawajal. And Allah Azawajal sent the Quran for people to understand and interact with it and react to it. So another occasion, Allah Azawajal sent the surah in the Quran. Allah Azawajal said, Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab, ma agna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab, sayasla naran dhata lahab, full stop. So Jibreel came with these four phrases, that Tabbat yada, the hands of Abu Lahab perished, his money ma agna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab, his money he earned will not benefit him. He... Sayasla Naran, he will be exposed to a fire with, which has a great flame. But nothing mentioned after that. 
And the Prophet ﷺ was with Abu Bakr in Mecca, and the wife of Abu, Abu Lahab came. So Abu Bakr said to the Prophet ﷺ, this lady, she's the wife of Abu Lahab, and she has very sharp tongue and very filthy language. I really don't want you to listen to her. I don't want you to get upset for what she says. The Prophet ﷺ said, don't worry, she will not see me. So she came, and she asked, where is your friend Muhammad? <laughs> and he was standing there smiling. She couldn't see him. She saw Abu Bakr. How dare he say about my husband, he will go to hellfire. How dare he just is, how dare she started like, trying to insult the Prophet. And she went and Jibreel came back, completed the surah. Now we will prove to you that his wife as bad as him. So he included her. So the Quran wasn't only sent in one go, it was sent in phrases, sometimes one phrase added, and small phrases added to make it clear to the Sahaba and to know they are awake when they listen to the Quran, they are interacting with it. They know what they heard and they um, could do it or not do it. Like um, Allah sent an ayah, Ya ayya allazina amanu iza khataftum rasula faqaddimu bayna yaday najwakum sadaqa iza najaytum rasula. If you speak to the Prophet, give some gift before you speak to him. And most of them are actually poor and they want to ask the Prophet so they might not ask because you know, every time you want to come and ask me, if I say, you know, I'm the teacher, but every, every time you ask me, you give me 10 quid. <laughs> None of you will ask. So Ali ibn Abi Talib came and he gave the Prophet Sallallahu dirham to ask him. The Prophet I'm Adam Khan, so you're not on my list. Then. Put me into your Adam. Next week. Uh, by the way, I send my homework on uh, on the WhatsApp, so I need your phone number. You need your phone number. Do you know? Do you have a phone? Mobile. Uh, yeah, yeah. Write it down and get it. Uh, after that, give it to your friend then. Um, and um, and take this. Uh, this is what you're going to study with me. Every week you come, you get the subject stamped. When all stamped, you graduate. Take three to five years. Right. Could take ten years if you skip my classes. Uh, and you sit down. What are the numbers? Uh, next to your name, hey. Right. Write the number and give it to Isa to write his number as well. So. Um, So the Prophet ﷺ was receiving the Qur'an, the Qur'an, the people interact with the Qur'an, like when Allah um, said, uh, um, about Siyam, um, to fast Ramadan. The fast was to fast, eat on Maghrib, and you fast till the next Maghrib. And the Prophet ﷺ saw a man who was really becoming very weak during the day. He said, what happened to you? He said, he, I gave it to him to sign, to put his phone number. And uh, he said that he came home, he was quite tired and he slept before Maghrib. And he missed Maghrib, so he missed to break the fast and he couldn't fa break the fast. So he's been fasting for two days in sequence without any food. So he became very weak. So Allah Azawajal sent Jibreel with an ayah, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمْ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ It's not my pain. It's his pain. Eat and drink until you have... Um, You chose to squeeze it all close to each other. So it's uh, five zero one six three.
50163 the end of it yeah if I write the wrong number, I won't get to. So it's here zero six six five six. Um. So I said, eat and drink until the white string appear from the dark string. So one of the Sahaba was tying white string and dark string on his toes. Can I see the white from the one, from the black? And uh, it's difficult, especially if you are at inside the room. So Allah has sent to them min al-fajr. Just two words, min al-fajr, he added. Because he wants their brain to work. How can I, how long I keep eating? Eat from Maghrib till Fajr, till the break of, dawn, break of dawn. When do we know the break of dawn? When you see the white string from the black string. How do I see it? He put white string, black string, it's not that. It's the, on the horizon. When the white string appear on the horizon, min al fajr. So the Quran didn't come one bulk, came on stages over 23 years, and sometimes added two words or two phrases to understand. So all that had been collected by the Sahaba in writing. And then when the Prophet ﷺ died, the Sahaba, Umar al Khattab, felt that we need to collect all these writings. Because this wrote two pages, the other one wrote three pages, the other one wrote five pages. But where are they? We want them in one volume. So they set the rules that we will ask everybody to bring all the ayah they wrote. And every ayah there should be two witnesses to witness. Yes, we heard it from the Prophet. So you have it in writing and you have two witnesses to say we heard it from the Prophet Now, who is supervising the writing of the Quran? When the Prophet was alive, وسلم, he was. After he died, there's one ayah, two ayahs, only written, and one person heard it from the Prophet. So the rule cannot be applied. You need two. Who is that person? Ibn Khuzayma. Now, Ibn Khuzayma is the only one given permission by the Prophet وسلم, to be one witness instead of two. So if you have Ibn Khuzayma on your side, he's two witnesses. How that happened? Anybody knows the story? How that happened? He had that title. It's good, you know, you are, you're so trusted that only you will be enough. The Prophet ﷺ was, he bought a camel. And he was taking the camel home. And the Bedouin who sold him the camel was walking behind the camel. And people thought the camel belonged to the Bedouin. So they said to him, many of them, would you like to sell it? Would you like to sell it? Then he thought, oh, I'll sell it again. So he said, yes, I will sell it. And the Prophet ﷺ turned and he said, you sold it to me and I gave you the money. He said, have you got a witness? And the Khuzayma was standing there. He said, I witnessed. He was selling you the camel and he, you sold him the camel. He took the money, blah, blah, blah. And the guy, because he was lying, he just disappeared. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said to Ibn Khuzayma, you were not there. Why you said you witnessed? He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, I believe you what the message came from above seven heaven, from Allah. Said, Wouldn't I believe you about the camel? <laughs> Obviously you are telling the truth. Obviously that guy was lying. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said the phrase, Man shahid lahu Ibn Khuzayma, fahuwa hasbo. If Ibn, Ibn Khuzayma was your witness, he's, he's acting instead of two, even four. You don't have to have a second witness. I said, yes, that's it. The Quran, this two ayahs, the end of Surah, and they put them the end of Surah Tawbah. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَوْهُ الرَّحِيمُ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ هُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ one witness. So who is supervising even documentation of the Quran? Allah Azza wa Even after the Prophet وسلم, passed away. Until now, Allah Azza wa said, inna nahnu nizzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. So when the Sahaba came to write down the Sharia in total, because people travel and go far away and they left the Arab, Arabian Peninsula and they went to Middle East, went to Africa, went to Asia, Asia went to 
Iran, Afghanistan, went to Turkey. So how are we going to correct the Sharia? Now, a group of uh, Muslims devoted their life to collect the Sharia. And the uh, four we know and we all follow, Abu Hanifa, Maliki, Shafi'i, and Hanbali. So when it came to where to get the information about Islam, they all agreed the Quran first. Why the Quran first? Because the Quran transmitted by group to a group to a group. Every, everything transmitted by more than six people to six people or more called mutawatir. There's so many people heard it from the buffet and so many people told so many people until the collector collect them. So the Quran was transmitted by thousands and thousands of people to thousands of next generation to thousands and thousands until now. We don't only, every, like every family is keen to teach their children the Quran and their children become adult and they get married and have children they teach the Quran and so on and so forth. So all of them, Shafi, Hanafi, Malki, Hanbali, take the Quran as the first source of Sharia because it is mutawatir. When it comes to the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, now there's some hadith heard by tens of people, like the khutbah when the Prophet wasallam made the khutbah, the last hajj, the only hajj he made. How many heard him? 130,000 were in the hajj. And the Prophet ﷺ was here. You can hear the Prophet wherever you are. Subhanallah. Allah made it like this. He was giving khutbah once in the, in the mosque in Medina. And in the market, Abdullah ibn Abbas was in the market. And the Prophet said to the people in the mosque, sit down. And Abdullah ibn Abbas in the market heard him and he sat down. Why are you sitting down? The Prophet said sit down. But the Prophet was far away. But he has that ability to make people. So how many heard him in uh, giving the last sermon in, Medi in, uh, in Mecca, in Hajj? 130,000. But not every hadith heard by 130,000. So does um, the, the hadith mutawatir heard by so many people and the scholars agreed six or more would be mutawatir, like the Quran, narrated by so many people to so many people unlikely to collide with each other about the hadith. And then the second type of hadith, hadith heard by one person. Or oh, one person narrated the hadith. Because what happened in the time of the Sahaba? They asked one of the Sahaba, why don't you narrate hadith like you know, Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Abbas? And he said, why I should repeat it? He said, that's it. We all trust them. Um, I don't need to all of us say, oh yeah, yeah, I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. No, no need. But if all the Sahaba narrated the hadith, will be millions of hadith. Um, so the second type is the hadith mentioned by one person. Now the problem here, the Quran Mutawatir, taken by all the Mizahib, Hamafi, Shafi, Hanbali, and Malki, the hadith Mutawatir taken by all of them. The single hadith, Abu, Abu Hanifa said, I can't take that as strong, authentic. Because the person likely to forget, misheard, misinterpreted. So he will not take the hadith mentioned by one person to set the rules for him. Because he's making what's haram, what's haram. You're not going to make haram for something doubtful. The rest, they said, if it is strong hadith, people narrated the hadith are all truthful or have good memory or lived with the Prophet at the time of the Prophet, blah, 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 will take the hadith. Now, uh, the singular hadith taken by Shafi and Maliki, but Hanbali take every single hadith as strong as every other hadith, which caused some time trouble because the Prophet ﷺ said once, I wish I deputized somebody to pray in, 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 on my behalf, and I go to people who are praying in their houses, and I burn their houses on top of them to emphasize the importance of praying jama'ah in the mosque. But he didn't do it. So Shafi and Maliki said the Prophet didn't do it. Hanbali said, but the hadith mentioned by the Prophet, you must do it. But that made a bit of life a bit difficult for people who are living in an environment 
where Maliki Mezhab, where Hanbali Mezhab is practiced. Where? Where is practiced? Hanbali Mezhab? Saudi. In Saudi. When I went to Saudi to work in Riyadh, when it's Zuhr time, the religious police move around, every shop has to close, every school has to stop, every worker in, in the airport, we used to stop in the airport, I was in the airport, medical officer there, we used to stop to pray Mughrib or pray Aisha. Everyone, <laughs> have no excuse. Many people don't want to go and pray, so they shut their shutter from inside. <laughs> when they hear the Imam saying, Salaamu Alaikum wa they open the shutter. I was in my house, uh, which was uh, in a small area, knock on the door, open the door, there's the police officer with machine gun and the police, religious police. Why are you praying in the house? You want to pray in the mosque, yeah, but it's Asr at that time. And you go there and the Imam, there's no time like the Imam will pray in so and so time. Like we have in Highland here, it's him pray more about Adhan, we pray Asr at six o'clock, so everybody knows. Yes, Asr is quarter to five, but we pray at six. Or we will, you know, uh, they don't have this. So you go there and you sit for an hour in the heat and sweating and the Imam is having lunch or something. I don't know. So you must go. <laughs> if you don't go, you spend three nights in the police cell. It's not a joke. This is the way they interpret Hadith. One Hadith that the Prophet wished to go and burn the houses down. So what would you do if you were in my place? You start going to the mosque. Did you hear from me what I did before? No? What would you do? I went and bought a spying lens, <laughs> fixed it on the door. So when nobody knock on the door, we look. If it's the religious police, my wife will answer. But this is interpretation could make life really difficult for people. Because you will be, you know, you contract, signing contract, you're doing something, you know, you're selling somebody, you, you can't suddenly just close and go. Especially people who are selling uh, gold and silver. Because in Riyadh, one of the things distracted me, when they, when the call for the Adhan, they don't even close the door. They just put a stick on the door. Or they put a sheet on the things outside. And nobody steal because at that time they were cutting the hands in 1980. They don't cut any hands now. But there were no theft. It was really... Until now, it's practice in many countries. We went to Morocco five years ago, me and my wife. And my wife wanted a certain size of earring. And he left that in the shop and he went to get from his friend. And I took a video and said, look, you know, we are alone, me and my wife. And the guy trusted us with millions of pounds of gold around. But anyway, you, the hadith, if it's taking single hadith, it's taken beyond its expectation, you might make life difficult. But that's the way it is, the Hanbali Mazam. They take a lot of things seriously. So you don't have, um, like a guy came, we're making zikr in the mosque, oh, you can't do that, why? Oh, the Prophet, but that's, uh, that's your interpretation. Because Allah said, Allah zikran kathira, in the group, uzkuru, plural. But anyway, the hadith which will be taken seriously by Hanafi, Abu Hanifa, is the hadith which was mentioned by one Sahabi, but heard by a lot of other Sahabis or people tabi'in, the next generation. It's called famous hadith. Like a hadith the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, and the hadith is only narrated by Umar ibn Khattab, that in the al bin niyat deeds are ruled by intention. But he said that Umar ibn Khattab in the mosque in front of thousands of people. So it was narrated, the second narrators, because you have the chain, the first in the chain of Umar ibn Khattab, the second in the chain were hundreds of people. So yes, it was narrated by one, but the, heard by tens and hundreds of people, so became famous. That um, Abu Hanifa will take. Abu Hanifa will not take the singly narrated, but he take the singly narrated if it became famous hadith. The rest is not necessarily. The fourth way of taking um, the, the Sharia 
For Malik, he takes the practice. Because he only lived in Medina. Malik never went anywhere else. He came out from going to Hajj. He lived only in Medina. He takes what the Medina people do as the Sharia. But Sahaba left Medina and went spreading Islam all over the place. Went to Egypt, went to the Middle East, went to Turkey, went to Afghanistan, whatever. They went and spread. So not only the Sahaba stayed in Medina, many Sahaba left Medina. And not all the Sahaba heard all the hadith of Umar Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Certain people were with him in this place, certain people were with him in that place. So you need to take the majority of what all they heard. But Malik took only what people practice in Medina as the Sharia. So he's different than Abu Hanifa and Shafi and Hanbali. But it's a source of the Sharia, the practice of people of Medina, only taken religiously, strictly by Malik. Now the fifth, the sixth one is called consensus, Ijma'. Ijma'. all um, Shafi, Hanafi, Malki, Hanbali take it as a source of Sharia. What Ijma' means, consensus. That all the Sahaba understood that point the same. Or all the top scholars who know Islam, they all agreed that's the meaning of this rule. And that has been taken. Where is it from? The first one to talk about it this way was Shafi. They said, where did you get this from? We know Quran and we know Sunnah. Where is the consensus came from? And he came to the ayah and said to Nisa, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقَ الرَّاهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ وَنَتَوَلَّ وَنُصْدِهِ جَهَنَّمُ If you dispute with Allah and his messenger, after you were told the truth, and you take a root other than the root of the believers, you are going to hellfire. So they took it as must if the Muslims collectively they understand this haram, it's haram. If you ignore them and you choose your own way, you're going to hellfire. It's like if you, um, if you come to... Um, there's something here in Britain, in America, called the sperm bank. People donate their sperm and somebody take it and carry a baby. In Islam, it's haram. All the scholars understood that it is haram. They took it from a hadith. There's no test to baby at that time. But the Prophet said the hadith that a type of adultery is to put your sperm in a womb of a woman who is not your wife. Who was the time of the Prophet وسلم, taking a sperm and putting it? No one. But the hadith is there. So when it came that surrogate mothers and test pube babies and, and the sperm um, bank, all the scholars understood this haram. Obviously, the, um, the scholars who know Islam, you don't take an opinion of uh, Joe Bloch or Abdullah and Abdul Hamid, wherever he lives. Even he takes people who know Islam. So all of them agreed that surrogacy is haram. When surrogacy was practiced by the American at the beginning, uh, problems started appearing. Surrogacy that a woman agreed to carry the baby of the biological father and mother in her womb. And when she gave birth, they give, the, they give her $10,000. That when they started, it was 10000 I don't know how much now. Um, but surrogacy is haram in Islam. Why? Because she is carrying a sperm of a man who is not her husband. So this is the way the Muslim understood it. If somebody said, oh, it's halal, he left the understanding of the majority of the Muslims, the scholars, and he took his own way. So he's likely to go to hell fire. So it's not a joke. So consensus of the scholars in Islam is taken as a source of Sharia. And they don't come with it out of their mind. They look into a lot of hadiths they heard and ayah, and they combine them together and they say, that's it, that's haram. When we met in, uh, I went to one of the conferences in Egypt, and the Shia allowed it. I don't know why. Because the hadith is, is there. That um, adultery is putting your sperm in a woman who is not your wife. So, but consensus is agreed by Saha, all the Shafi, Hanafi, Malki, and Hanbali. So is comparison. The comparison to compare a situation with a similar one. 
and also taken by all the Mazahib. Um, and Hanafi take comparison more than the rest, which sometimes might cause trouble or sometimes might cause easiness. Like in Hanafi, Shafi and Malki and Hanbali say, if you don't read Fatiha in the Salah, your Salah is not accepted. Because the Prophet said, La Salata Biduni Fatiha Til Kitab. No Salah accepted without reading Fatiha. But it's a single hadith narrated. Now, Abu Hanifa take the Quran ahead. In the Quran, Allah said, um, read whatever you can from the Quran. So he said, it's in the Quran. You can read. Like, you know, that's it, and you, your prayer is good. Shafi and, and Maliki and Hanbali say, no, you haven't done salah, you have to repeat it. But Hanafi took it from the Quran, compared, is the Quran ahead, but there's a lot of hadiths that, and practices that negate what you say. That could cause the trouble that some people will refuse to pray behind Hanafi. In Syria, beginning of last century, in Mumayyad Mosque, the biggest mosque in Damascus, there used to be four jama'ah. The Shafi'i pray, they finish, then the Hanafi pray, they finish, the Maliki pray, finish, and Hanbali pray and finish, four jama'ah. That's not on. So a lot of scholars came and said, no, you have to know all the mazahim and why they're doing it this way. And they cancelled all these four prayers. There's one prayer. But the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallu wa fajr. Pray behind any, whether it's good or bad. And Sallu, um, Isma wa tiyu wa lawina, willi alaykun abdun habashi rasuhu zabiba. Accept the leader even if he was a, a dark black guy with curly hair. So there's a lot of hadith to unify the Muslims. One thing which is good, understanding of Abu Hanifa uh, from the Quran, he understood, because the hadith, the Prophet said, La nikaha biduni wali wa shahidain. No nikah, no marriage is right without um, the guardian of the woman and two witnesses. Otherwise, nikah is not accepted. Um, except Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa said the woman can marry herself because it's a contract. And in the Quran, she's allowed to buy and sell and own things. And in the Quran, there's another ayah. Uh, Don't stop women marrying their own husbands when he's divorced the first time. So he said, if there's no wali, you can still, a woman can marry herself. And we came, somebody came to the mosque here in Highland, and um, she's the lady, she wants to marry um, a newly become Muslim convert, but she hasn't got any relative. None. A lot of, <laughs> I didn't know, I mean, a lot of British outside, they don't even know whether they have a father or mother. Where is there? She hasn't got any, any member of her family. No fa because you need your father, she needs her father, or her grandfather, or her eldest brother, or her uncle, father's side. Or her uncle on the mother's side, if none of these exist. But I was faced with this. I copied Hanafi. Because Hanafi said, okay, according to Hanafi, you can marry yourself to this guy. And Hanafi took it from the Quran. It's not like out of his own mind, but his interpretation. But he used the Qiyas. He used the comparison. Since she's allowed to write contracts and buy a house and buy a car or sell uh, commodity, whatever, she is able to contract somebody to marry her. So he took it like this, and he took it from the Quran when she, don't stop them marrying their own husband. So he said, that's okay, perfectly okay to marry herself. But don't go and marry yourself. <laughs> you need your guardian. When the first guy became Muslim, and um, when I was in Lincoln, and he went to marry his girlfriend, I phoned my teacher and I said, shall I invite her father to give her away? And my teacher said, yes, must. It's in the Quran. So I invited her family and her father to give her to the husband. And um, 
the guy's family as well, and were so pleased, they were so happy that we considered their opinion. Yes, your daughter now is a Muslim and you're not a Muslim, but you still have a say in whom to marry. So the comparison, taking a bit of a step ahead by Abu Hanifa than the rest. Like here, the Hanbali took the single hadith ahead of everybody else. So you see the variation between the Mazahib, Hanafi, Malki, Hanbali, Shafi, because of this. Because where the hadith lie, and how do you take the consensus and how you take the work of people of Medina and how you uh, use the comparison. Comparison, give you another example. In the Quran, Allah said, that khamr means wine. And maysir means gambling. And ansab, they don't do ansab now, they throw it or whatever. Well, Islam, it's an act of shaitan, as we did. What about whiskey? Allah said, wine. Is whiskey halal? Now you go to compare with other hadiths of the Prophet, وسلم, the Prophet said, وسلم, said, Kullu muskirin haram. Everything make you drunk is haram. If you want to take the Quran, according to the Quran, only wine is haram. So can you drink whiskey? People who don't take the hadith, which obviously haram. You have to take the hadith because in the Quran, Allah said, must take what the Prophet gives you. You must take whatever he forbid you leave. But the Prophet said the hadith is not a matter of choice. It is a must. It's part and parcel of Islam. But suppose somebody say, oh, I don't only take the Quran. The Quran said, khamr, which is wine, haram. Baba, whiskey, vodka, gin. You need the hadith. Because the hadith said, everything make you drunk is haram. Why then you say, oh, there's a small quantity in alcohol in the beer. You know, beer doesn't, some beer have a small quantity. Halal or haram. Then you go to another hadith. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, kathiruhu faqaliluhu haram. Whatever make you drunk in large quantity, in small quantity is haram. Even like this. And he said another hadith, if I allow you to drink it like this, you will drink it like this. If I allow you to drink it like this, you will drink it like this. If I allow you to drink it like this, you drink it like this. And it's known in, in people who drink alcohol become addicted. Uh, some keep drinking till they get drunk. Some keep drinking till they have no money. So sometimes we can't have a stop. So comparison become important and knowing all the Sharia important. Even the Hadith mentioned by a single person. It's important to know because if you don't know, you miss uh, part of the Haram. You might be in Haram, you don't know. What about lottery? When I came to Sarihal, they used to have a raffle ticket. Ah, so, 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 a basket here, you know, you win it. Is it Halal or Haram? Raffle ticket. At work, they used to have, uh, would you buy this? I don't know, buy raffle tickets. <coughs> How much is it? 20p? Okay, it's two pounds the donation. But they don't want raffle ticket. It is gambling. Now, um, the comparison becomes important when it is life becoming more complicated. When it comes, like I told you about economy before, is future market halal? You need to go to Sharia. Future market, you buy uh, something to receive it after three months. Now in Sharia, do you have it or not? If it's fish in the sea, I might not be able to fish it. It might be a storm, might be a tornado, might be this, you can't. It, it's like uh, last week there were a news item, a lot of crops damaged by the rain, the recent rain, because it became wet and they can't store it and to sell it for human consumption, so they had to sell it as animal feed. So animal feed, is, there's a major difference in price. So um, you need these four bazaar because they dug, they dug in the Sharia and they found all about the Hadith which being narrated, linked it to the Quran, and they linked it to the consensus, linked it into the Ijma and the Qiyas, and they came with the Sharia. Oh, I don't want to be Shafi. You can't. You have to follow one mazhab. What do you follow? You go to the Quran and read it yourself? The Quran, Allah said, 
if you is at the dayantum bidaynain ila ajalin musamma faktubu. End of Surah Al-Baqarah. If you have a loan, you must write it down and have two witnesses. Mom, can I have 10 quid, please? Can you borrow me 10 quid? Oh, you need to write it down, you need two witnesses. It's become difficult. Or if you buy something, you need two witnesses that you bought it. A few times you go to buy your grocery, you have to take two witnesses with you. No. But the, the ayah, later Allah said, I mean, Abadu Kumbadan, for you, Eddie, to me, Amanata. If you trust him, it's okay. Who told you that there is this second ayah? Who told you there's. I went to see a family divorced, a Libyan family divorced, uh, husband divorced, a wife. And they want to come back to each other, and the family refused. Where is the family? In Libya, part of the family in America, and the father and mother in Hajj. How can we get them to agree? I said, look, you know, according to Mazhab Hanafi, she can marry herself back to her husband. It's in the Quran. And they married, and we did the nikah, second nikah, obviously. And I think two years later, the guy who took me to this family, he said that's the most successful marriage they had. They're enjoying the second marriage more than the first one. Um, so, so you need, obviously, this is, we'll come back to this, because I, I gave it um, five, uh, six lessons. Um, one, two, three. Today we're going to stand 120. Um, and we'll come back to it again later uh, to complete. Pro- the first, for the new one, the first week I do Aqidah, second week Sharia. This is Sharia today. The third week I do moral values, and the fourth week I do history. And then I come back to Aqidah, Sharia, history, and so on. Sallallahu alayhi wa